Have you considered, John? Aye. Your answer? No. Why, pray? You would have me sit as a judge at the King's trial. Others have already agreed. <laughs> By whose authority will he be tried? By that of Parliament. Oliver, this is your Parliament, since you purged it. <laughs> is that not the truth? Aye, sir, for you are honest John Lilburn. Let a new Parliament be freely elected. Let that Parliament call for we the waste King. Waste our breath together, sir. Then answer me this one thing. If it happened that Charles Stewart be found innocent of the crime of making war on his people, will you let him be set free? England will never be at peace till this matter of the King be settled once for all. Fare you well. Court commands the charge be read. My Lord, in behalf of the Commons of England and of all the people thereof. Hold it. In behalf of the Commons of England and of all the people thereof, I do accuse Charles Stuart here present as a tyrant, traitor, and murderer, public and implacable enemy to the Commonwealth of England and man of blood. <laughs> Sir, we would have your answer. I would know by what lawful authority I am called hither. Remember, I am your king. We are satisfied of our own authority. It is not your self-satisfaction that should decide the matter. I know as much law as any one of you. Show me one precedent in history for these proceedings. It is not for a prisoner to require. Sir, I am not an ordinary prisoner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A boy. He came too early into the world. No air in his lungs. Now the law can hang me. Ask Elizabeth to fetch me my wedding dress. And then you can go home, Sexby. I have no home if you be hanged. Then wander the world. For hanged I must be. In the name of the people of England. Not a half, not a quarter of the people of England. Oliver Cromwell is a 
traitor! Get away with you! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! The prisoner, having refused to give his answer to the charges, has thereby confessed his guilt. The prisoner may speak. I must tell you all. This many a day, all things have been taken away from me. But that which I call more dear to me than my life, my conscience and my honor. If I held more respect to my life than the peace of the kingdom, I should have made a defense for myself that might leastwise have delayed the ugly sentence which I believe you will pass on me. I know it is in vain to dispute with you. I cannot deny the power you have. I have nothing more to say. Sir, there is a bond made between a king and his people. A bond of protection due from the sovereign and subjection due from the people. When this bond is once broken, farewell sovereignty. Charles Stuart, as a tyrant, traitor, murderer, and a public enemy shall be put to death by the severing of his head from his body. Why is it so still? They kill the king today. friends today, madam. Here before me, Sarah, ready to pull at my legs and hasten my death. Where's the hangman? Elizabeth, tell your mother when you see her that my thoughts have never strayed from her, <laughs> that my love will be the same to the last. Will you tell her? Sweetheart, I fear you will forget this. I shall not forget it whilst I live. It is very low. It can be no higher, sir.
You die a thief. Will you at last admit your guilt and beg forgiveness? I will beg nothing from you. Nor any man. Men have accused me. Men have judged me. And now men will kill me. Men have sought to silence me all my days. But before I am cut off, hear me. You're the thief, sir, for that you've stolen this world. You're the murderer for that you've killed its dreams. <laughs> it's a very pretty gallant speech. Where is the hangman? Must leave now, sir. On, Speak to Cromwell about anything now, yeah. but he will lay his hand upon his breast. Aye, and he'll elevate his eyes. He'll call God to record. He will weep, he will howl, he will repent. Even while he does smite you under the fifth rib. <laughs> Comrades, what did the army fight for? Yeah? To name Oliver absolute lord and ruler over Ireland. Gentlemen, Edward, the Republic fights for its first breaths, while Honest John incites the army to mutiny against me. This is how he sees me now, Edward, as a tyrant. You may speak openly. Master Thurlow serves the nation. Freeborn John thinks he may have seen your hand at work in the murder of Thomas Rainsborough. <laughs> Do the level of regiments talk of that? In secret. For there is hardly a one now in England does not fear the general. And you? Did you see my hand in it? No. Then will you come with me? To Ireland? To kill Papists? To make certain that no Scottish or French armies will ever find friends there. My army is brave. But they will see sights in Ireland that they never thought to see. I need eyes with me there who have seen those sights before. Your army is owed its wages. As we take the land from the Papists, we will sell it to the Protestants and pay the army its wages. One of the Papists. The last they arose, they killed mothers and ate their babies, sir. They're beyond humanity, Edward. Come with me. The man who stood so close to Thomas Rainsborough. 
must now stand close to me. Come, sir. Will you be Colonel Saxby? Brighten your sword, Colonel Saxby. The Lord has work for us both. You must first to Burford, Edward. The leveler regiments have arrested their officers and refused to march for Ireland. Honest John has his mutiny. Mutiny? These are brave and honest men, sir. I know them. Go to them. As from me, let them lay down their arms and release their officers. Tell them old Noel will come to them in person and all their grievances will be heard. Upon my word. What are your plans, madam? To live the life you gave me. <laughs> what will you do? I go to Ireland. I have an officer's wages. They are yours. How? Be my wife. I promised the best man in England I would protect you. Be my wife. In outward show only. And my promise is kept. A woman cannot survive alone. No, Saxby. I mean to shift for myself now. There are diggers at Fanshawe House. I mean to join them. The diggers follow Thomas dreams. Land a commonwealth, property leveled, and every man's conscience his own. The diggers will not take you in if you be unmarried. Consider. I do not ask for love. I do not ask for a marriage bed. I ask only that you let me serve you. Do you have me write you letters? Sexby, why have you done this? Duty, madam. A promise given. John writes us this message from the tower. If Cromwell is allowed to go on as he is, he will make himself king. And there will be nothing but cutting of throats from here. Let's wait for Colonel This you may not do and still be soldiers. Untie your officers. This defiance cannot go on. Give them their weapons and their horses. Be not afraid of them hereafter. One greater than them comes to listen to you. The general himself. Now hear me. Throw your weapons up here. Do it now. Come now. Let none say you drew your weapons at Old Knoll. When you speak, he will listen. When he speaks, you will listen. He will give you orders, and you will obey them. There will be no reprisals. This he has promised me, and I promise you the same. In the name of Thomas Rainsborough.
You thought to mutiny. You thought to imprison your officers. You thought to give orders to the army council. Show me the ringleaders. They will face a court-martial immediately. Sir! Your part is played, Colonel. You kept not covenant with us. Is there anyone who will not willingly submit to my will and accept my pardon? You wish to resign your commission, Edward? Island is our back door. It must be bolted. We march for Ireland. I keep that one. Why this one? Thomas Rainsborough lies there. It should be at the head of England. What's your business here, madam? I come to dig, if you will let me. Your name? Sexby. Mr. Sexby. Your husband? Gone from me. Dead? Not dead. On to Ireland. Come with me, Mistress Sexby. <laughs> Mistress Sexby wishes to live among us. Her husband is fighting in Ireland. You are welcome, Mistress Sexby. Those who work, eat. We share all. Story is written in your hands. I think you were not born to this work. My name's Christian. Tell me about the man in the earth whose grave you tend. I never knew him, but by report. You raised the common man and fought for his liberty against the rich and mighty. Truly, I wish he was here. Wishing will not bring him. No, but he should be here, for we are living in the best and last of days. Our last days are near. Christ is ready to walk the earth again. Do you not feel his love all around you? O oh, almighty God, who throughout the mouths of babes and sucklings hath ordained strength, and maketh infants to glorify thy name, with their innocence. Inspire us with thy grace. Another sign.
We begin again. Did reach Wexford? We were held a while at Arklow, General. Must be removed from our path. It is done. The garrison fled. What's left has been driven into a bog. There they wait for you. So is this the flower of all their army? Bring them out. They're stuck fast. How many are there? Twelve. Twelve bullets, then. We're short on powder and shot. to surrender, sir. Resist and you will all be blown to atoms. I cannot. He has orders. He will not defend the town purposefully, but needs to make a show of a fight before he surrenders. Purposeful or no, they will die, all of them. I'll drag no prisoners across this benighted land. Wake me when the walls are breached. Prepare to die. I hate to see any man's resting place neglected. Let me help you. Harry Fanshaw. Wonder what he was. The words move me, sir. When you said these days were like the days of Christ on earth. Full of love. I feel that love in these good people's hearts. They are good people. But they know not the intenseness of the times. I believe that you do. I believe that you taste the rare and beautiful air that we breathe. I have a sin to confess. I'm oh, no priest, sir. When I thought I heard you say that your husband was dead, my heart was glad. He lives still, though he be far away. Good night. 
Both your husbands are dead, madam. And lie here at my feet. I will tell no other. For truly, I think this is the bravest and best thing that any woman ever did. How do you know me? My mother worked in your kitchens. They hanged me as the devil. Then I love the devil. For truly, I could never love my Lady Angelica Fanshawe. She's far above me. Though I would give my life for her. Be not so eager to give your life, Christian. You may not be given another as I was. The land will never let us be. Master Jolliffe is not the true owner of the land. We are the owners of the land, for we work the land and we make it fruitful. Master Jolliffe? Aye, given it by Parliament. These things began when she came. You think I brought these things upon you? The devil's work began when you came among us, with his mark upon your neck. That is all. Frightened. I will leave tomorrow. I will follow you. I will follow you to the end of the earth. Christian. It is our desire, madam, that you leave us. You have your wish. Even though this life had begun to light a candle of hope in my heart. We will not have four Nikitas. I saw them. I just she saw nothing. The child imagined I things. I see the devil at her side. Aye. She gave Satan her baby. In God's name, will you make an end of this? No, sir. We will make an end of you and this woman. For if we do not, our enemies will call us polygamists and drive us off. Your enemies mean to drive you off in any case, Maddie, and not for a kiss in the night, but because you tell them to love their fellow men more than money or land. Was it not love that brought you together? And no more, madam. You must both be gone tomorrow. We will be gone, fear not. But I leave you with one question. If all on earth are equal, why do the women work in the field during the day and make the men's dinners at night? Sometimes we see what's not there. We see demons of our own conjuring. Wash dishes. <laughs> they are sold to feed my children. <laughs> Leave her! John will have a fair trial. On my word. Sir, if you take away John's life, I will have yours. Today, John, hang me. Ask my wife if he'll hang me. I spent nine shillings on a new pair of boots. <laughs> new boots. <laughs> new boots.
John Lilburn. Where is he? Let me shake his hand. You say you are not John Lilburn. Why should I say I am John Lilburn when it is said you'll hang him for treason? I say nothing on the matter. <laughs> you are charged with being the author of these pamphlets which urge the army to seditious mutiny. How me, sir? For that it says the name John Lilburn upon them. Why? Any man may write John Lilburn. Do you deny being the author of these pamphlets? What need I deny it when I have not said that I am John Lilburn? <laughs> and where is the man can prove a single soldier mutinied on account of these pamphlets in any case? Where are your witnesses? All in Ireland. Yeah. Oh, prithee, let me see the charges and have time to study the case. Sir, you mock this court. No, sir, you mock this court as you mock justice, as you mock truth and liberty. But they will not be mocked forever in the name of Almighty God in heaven. Ah, now, I remember me, you. Well, not you, sir, and you, sir. And yes, you, sir, all on the king's side when first we began our quarrel. Until, as I remember, until Oliver's army began to turn the tide, when, God's amazement, you found yourselves coming over. Whereas John Lilburn, wherever he may be, <laughs> did fight at Kyneton and at Newbury and at Marston Field. <laughs> I am honest John Lilburn, author of the pamphlet that urged the army to resist an unlawful and barbaric war in Ireland. And you, my fellow citizens, are the only judges that matter in this place. You and you alone have the decision. My life is in your hands. Men of the jury, what is your verdict? We have found John Milburn not guilty. Misled you, Sexby. He was for no love nor marriage bed. And my heart promised you neither. I but madam, I never thought you would dishonor me before all eyes. You're not dishonored, save you're taking part in Irish massacres. I thought of you every minute. Well, you slaughtered other men's wives and children. I'm your wife. I'm yours to command. I do not command. You must go wherever your heart inclines you. Then fare you well. Wait. I command. What is your future? More soldiering? I'm a spoiled soldier. Which I'm glad. But truly, I have seen my fill of butchering in this vile world. The world is not vile. And though some are that are in it. Even they can be saved by love, I think. <sighs> love? 
I love. I think you do not know it. And I, I pity you for it. Did love help the diggers when the army trampled their fields? No. What did love do for any man? Except make him run like a fool to his destruction. The diggers had not too much love, sir, but too little. But there are those who believe that love can save us all. Ranted. Only their enemies call them that. They call themselves the High Attainers, and I've made friends amongst them. Ranters! <laughs> Say you're drunk. Adam, do you know where this love will bring you? Do you know they have made female adultery a capital offence? If you continue as you are, they will hang you again. And who will save you? That boy. That boy, sir, may not know how to split a man open with his sword, but he sees the truth in us. In who? In me? In me. In us all, he sees love shining in our hearts, and he sees what it can do here on Earth. Sex be what use to bring down kings or parcel out land if we do not share all that is in us. Madam. Do you lie with him? I call men you're a fool when you drink. Do you lie with him? Have you lain with him? Let me go from here, sir. Why to? To him. Oh, for he loves you. He loves your innards. Where the light does shine, whereas I... Sexby. I can never love you. Ever. I'm sorry for you. I am grateful to you. But I will, I will never love you. free. But there is no freedom except that which comes with money and power. If you know of any other kind, then you must run after it. So, I've led her by the nose like a willing sow. And she truly believed in the diggers? No, sir. She gave her heart to fools and thieves. And now? Now she believes the world she longs for is finally at hand. It is. May your victory be the vanguard of ours. Your release, the harbinger of freedom for all on earth. The perfect freedom of universal love. <laughs> universal love. Universal love. Universal love. Universal love. Universal love. <laughs> Right.
Bring her. What shall I call you now, madam? Mistress Saxby. Your friends, the ranters, the high attainers, they find holiness in tobacco and alcohol and fornication. God in an ivy leaf. God in yourselves. And the Bible is waste paper. Who tells you this? I fear you mean to crush us as you did the levellers. Bluntly, madam. In a world without hell, how will I uphold the law? Was this the freedom you fought so bravely for, my Lord General? All that we fought for is in the balance. There is anarchy abroad, and the, the Parliament want an iron hand. Parliament wants money and land. It took my land and gave it to Master Jolliffe to enjoy for the term of his life. Aye, there are some that would like the clocks to be turned back, but I will not let them, for all their bleating in Parliament. Then leave my friends free to speak the love that lives in their hearts. A certain of their hearts? We seek an honest way to live on Earth now, not in terror of what's to come. Yet you blaspheme, madam. What will you burn me? Put a branding iron on me. Hang me. Have a care, Angelica. There is a world of difference between freedom and licentiousness. And think of me as your friend. And visit me. My old friends, they veer away from me now. Confess to you. My heart is not true. It betrays me every hour that I'm with you. I'm lured on. I desire that the world tells me what I conceive with you is sin. Is love a sin, madam? Tell me that it is not a sin. I'm married, Kristen. An outward form only. Yet I will not dishonor him. Why do you resign your commission? Still no better man for a fight in these islands. I'm finished with fighting. Well, then I have other work for you. Honest John has met with the Cavaliers. They've talked about bringing in the king's son from France. Oh, I know this to be true. How know it? We have agents among the malcontents. What work? Go to them, as one disaffected with me, and seek out their thoughts and their strength. Where is Honest John now? Have you read this? He calls upon the nation to rise up against you. Do not sleep easily in your palace at Hampton, my lord. Well, the country was pleased to show its gratitude to my lord for his many services. Parliament gave it. I remember not the country being asked. Perhaps Master Sexby need not act the part of disaffected. I could not tolerate this, Edward. This is open rebellion. Then put him on trial. Where's the jury that will find him guilty? No. No trial. If you move against him without the law, the whole of London will burn. You smell smoke? Honest John is even now sailing for Jersey, where the writ of habeas corpus does not run. Give me your answer tomorrow. Have it now. 
I will not act parts. Have a care, Edward. We must all bend to the times, all of us. What will not bend may break. Tomorrow. You must pull your wife out of the ranters, sir. She does not wear my reins, sir. Pity for her and for you. She runs to her utter destruction.
He that poisoned you is food for dogs now. He was in paid service. His task to debauch you and bring further ridicule upon the renters. Who? Jolliffe. That should have died in Whiten Woods. Yet he will die. And soon. Leave him, Sexby. He's an account that must be settled. I will settle it. There's food. Sex Call for coals. I will return to them. began on the day you married Harry Fanshawe. I did not know I had a heart until that hour. You filled it with unknown creatures whose names were Joy and Hope. Both sharper blades than any that had cut me before. I have something of yours. Every day. Then do not part with it now, as I will not with you. If you will take me. <sighs> you do not say I, sir. Take Rainsborough's widow to me while his murderers still walk the earth. Even yesterday, scenes of abominable lewdness and fornication were uncovered among the ranters. While this house nods asleep and speaks of toleration. Sirs, this toleration will undo us all. Let the fornicators be brought before the magistrates and be punished. Their lewd ill manners do not argue and, and end to religious toleration. Now you have other business today, I'm told. The motion is that this House declares that no authority shall end this House's sessions. Will you persist, sirs? Except its own authority. But you will keep yourselves here in perpetuity, then. Those for the motion say aye. 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 Enough! You're prattling. You are no parliament. Get you gone. Get you gone. Take your hands. Take this bauble with you.
What is this place? Montorgueil, in English Mount Pride. It is your pride has got you your new home. It is the Lord General himself has sent you here. This is your tomb, sir. You have doubts, Edward. Will you play a part with the Cavalier Party? Do you have agents among all the parties? That you need not know. How long have you had agents amongst the Royalist Party? Sir, I have other business. Had you agents amongst the Royalists at the time of Thomas Rainsborough's murder? Why were those men heard to cry out that they came from Cromwell? I will tell my lord that your answer was no. He will not be pleased. I will tell him myself. Then find him at Westminster, for there he stays. Saxby. Only madmen oppose us now. I pray you be not mad. At Westminster, come. Saxby, stay. Talk with me. We talked the night he was cutting pieces. No more talk. Edward, are you with me again? What is it, Edward? My lord, we came to ask mercy for John Lilburn and to pray you, when will he have his trial? Never, madam. Then when will he be free? Again, never. And when will his wife and children see him? Once more, madam. Never. Come, Edward, all this you know. Stand out of my way. Did you order the murder of Thomas Rainsborough? Check for you! He's unwell, my lord. His brain has got his sick. He's ever your lordship's loving servant. Hurt not a hair on his head. He was a brother to me. Take him to the coast and put him out of England tonight. Sexby, if you return ever, I will have you hanged. Away. Settle all accounts. Sexby! Pray you, let me go with him. He is all I have left now. Let him go, madam, from whence he came. There's fighting in the Low Countries. He will find wages there. Edward was never happy, except he was cutting throats. He's not for you. I did tell it. Where's my wine? I came with what speed I could, sir. Are you impatient? Truly, this day has been a long while in the coming. Huh. Well, the whore is a man again. You are an abomination in the eyes of God and of all godly men. Why have you persecuted me, sir? Because you are the age, madam. Weak, womanish, lustful. And not a one of you knows where you should be. Where should we be? You, madam, should be dead. I watched you hang. I saw your pretty ankles kicking at the clouds.
would I have pulled the rope myself? Then I would be a phantom. And phantoms cannot harm us. But, sir, I'm not your crippled imaginings. I am flesh and blood. Not of Edward Sexby, I beg of you. He is gone, and that is flat. Elizabeth Lilburn will not kneel before you because her husband forbade her ever ask a favour of the tyrant, but I kneel on her behalf. Walk with me. I never looked for aught of this. I was just a farmer. God showed me the way to lead men in battle. I never thought to have a nation's care in my weak sinner's hands. Will you eat a simple supper with me, Angelica? So have you forgiven me? For what? I took a husband from you. You took two? When you sent Thomas Rainsborough to Pontefract, it was to cut the head off the levelers, was it not? Aye, it was. Did you strike him down, Oliver? I would have faced him in the field. I would have killed him there with God's help. He was murdered by the Cavaliers, Angelica, as God is my witness. If he'd killed you in the field, a different England. If Thomas sat here now, instead of Oliver, what would be different? Well, Thomas and freedom, Oliver and tyranny? Oliver and order. Thomas and convulsion. And if convulsion, then famine. And if famine, then where is the freedom? Where is freedom for us, John? Each new day brings another plot to assassinate me and bring us closer to anarchy and terror. In times like this, some of the freedoms we fought for must be sacrificed. There is nothing that now stands between us and utter destruction but me. Almighty God chose me. Not Thomas Rainsborough nor anyone else. He chose me. He chooses the path I must now follow. I would have your understanding of what I must now give to the nation. Which is what? They will never be settled until they have a king again. What is the word king but a bauble? It's a feather in the cap. Well, why not in mine? I thought honest John had lost his senses when he told us this day would come. I came to petition you for Elizabeth Lilburn. What is your answer, my lord? 
Your petitions are granted. She shall have a pension. She may visit the island. Angelica. Prepare Elizabeth. Freeborn John Lilburn is broken in pieces. Fare you well, Oliver. We shall never meet again. They might execute you if you took up the pen. I fear that all our lives. No matter now, Beth. It was all mistaken. What was mistaken, John? To change the temporal world. All that matters is what waits for us. Elizabeth, he knows not what he says. Indeed I do, madam. When I am free, I will take up my cross. I will crucify the pride in me. I will tell Oliver, do the same. I cannot tell him. Cannot tell me. Cannot tell me what, madam. Though he will call himself Lord Protector, Oliver is to be king. will ever be that I was the wife of free-born John Lilburn. No speeches. We'll be damned before I will let you silence her. This is my land you're standing on. Madam, I was told no speeches. To your work, sirs. And you, to your homes. Again, it's turning. A little thought I would be turned so utterly. All right. Come. 
Mistress mine. First peep. The dark is clearing. Like mist uprising from the waterland where I began. Jack has his Jill. Then naught shall go ill. Six be where you come back. Kill the king. Every schoolboy will learn the name of Edward Saxby. That it set England free of its chains. And I will be free. What is it you look for? I swear in my life that I do love thee. Then give this up. And come with me to the new world. You must have the life you choose. I fear my ending will not be yours. Must all end in blood? Aye. We must stand in blood. One week hence, on the day of Oliver's glory, wait for me at the sea. The parish bells welcome England's new king. Think not to see me again. I will not be given to the butchers. That day will shake the world, madam. And all the blood will not have been in vain. Do you know me, Angelica? Aye, Edward. You are yourself. see him as a traitor and a tyrant. He will get the nation's thanks. He does this. This is your place, sir. Here I will make my horse seem lame. His carriage will have to stop. Good morrow to you. Good morrow, Good morrow, 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 Your Highness. Nay, let me be old and all a few hours more. Two. Today you ride before me. I recall a time I rode before you, do you remember? A kindton fight, my lord. It was a brave fight. Aye, my lord. I remember. Remember you well. 
you not fight near me when we saved Honest John and his dragoon? Very near, my lord. Remember Freeborn John, how he fought? Till he was one heartbeat away from paradise. I robbed him of a martyr's death, and he never forgave me. I remember John Lilburn every night in my prayers, my lord. As do I, too. Did you ever think this day would come? No. My lord, I did not. My lord, I cannot let you proceed any further.
On the day Sexby died, the new life he left me was already quick within me. Soon after Beth entered her new world, Oliver departed the old one he'd turned upside down. Oh, Lord. Give them consistency of judgment. Neutral love. Second King Charles came over the water, and the fountains of London ran with wine. Elizabeth? Look up there in those branches. Do you see anything? Do you see anything? I see leaves in the sky. <laughs> All my men were dead, their hopes and dreams gone with them. Yet we are the world we live in, the world we love in. These were the life and times of Angelica Fanshawe. In the final account, there is love and those sharp blades, joy and hope. <laughs>